Hey everybody, this is time again. Better take my earplugs out so I don't yell. I'm going to go ahead and try to put these arms in right now. Anyways, I've already got my wedge started in the back right here. I've got my whole glue in my mortise right there. I've even got a little bit of glue right there. Anyways, I'm kind of in a hurry because I don't know how far I can get with this. But anyways, I've got my little stump with the leather on it. I'm going to put that down right there. Get my big hammer. Anyways, before you do any of this, you got to make sure that this arm fits on there. You don't want to get this in there and it not go in. So anyways, I'll put that right down there. All right. There she went in. All right. You got to hold that straight so it's flat on the top and hits flat right there. All right. That's in. Then I move my chair over on this side. And I'm going to stand it up for a second. I want to put some glue in here. Got my back to you. I'm putting some glue in the hole right here. The mortise. I tried to squeeze a little bit of glue into my kerf. When you're sawing these curves, you want to try to make sure that the curve is straight like this. You don't want it to be slanted at all because that you want to drive that wedge straight in. If you have it at a curve, if you have it crooked, if that curve is crooked, when that wedge tries to go in, you know, it might break off. See, there's my little wedge. Move it around some so you can see it. But I start that in there and just barely make sure it's in there tight, but not too tight. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue in this spot. I don't know if it does any good or not, but I put it in there. Not too much. You don't want it to smear around and get out, get out of the hole, get out somewhere. That's just a little bit. I don't know. Anyways, let's see. Okay, I didn't stir this around yet. Always wipe your nail off. Okay. There I got. I'm just holding this chair. I didn't move my support. Put that down in there like that. Holding it flat level. You know, across this way. Snap right in. Okay. Now then I'm gonna kick that out of the way. Put my chair like this. And I'm gonna grab just any piece of flat wood. This happens to be one of these bottom sanders, but I'm gonna put it across here like that. And clamp it. Just clamping onto this airfoil underneath there. And you want to put these clamps, you want to put this far enough back so you can work on these, this spot here.
And one of the reasons you need the board is that this arm doesn't exactly line up with the airfoil there. Because we, anyways, doesn't line up. So now, see I've already got my holes pre-drilled from the drill press so I know exactly where to drill. And I'm going to use my 5 8 Forstner bit. And I'm going to drill these holes. I've got a line on here, a line that's two inches. We'll check. Okay, before I do that though, I want to get my, if I get my platform thing, it keeps the chair more steady when I'm, when you're drilling. Put that on there like that. And that way your chair isn't rocking back and forth. But you want to drill right down straight in line with that leg. When this Forstner bit, the thing, the, that bit will get clogged up. You got to pull it out and empty it. See how it's clogged up? And one of the ways that you can tell if you're going straight down is look at this shank of the drill right there and see if it's centered in the hole here. If it stops drilling, it means you're clogged up. There, I'm to the line. So I'll measure that and see how good we did. Shooting for two inches. Just a little bit over, so that's okay. I'm just going to drill one of those holes right now. You don't have to watch me drill both of them. That one of the ways you can get, make sure this hole's cleaned out is with a straw, but you got to make sure to shut your eyes, keep your hand like this, because it'll blow up and right in your eyes. Anyways, clean that hole out, and now I got my uh, peg, and I'm going to put, I'm going to try to put glue, I'm not trying to inject glue into these curves. I'm just going to do the sides on this one. But I'm going to wipe all that excess glue off the outside. I don't want any of that on there. It'll just smear out and get on the top of the arm. Then I'm putting a little wedge right there in the bottom. I'm going to tap it in a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of in a hurry, but trying to do right. I'm going to put a little drop of oil, glue in here. And you have to be careful with the amount of glue that you put down in this hole here. If you put too much glue in there and it goes into the bottom, gets down in the bottom, when you drive that uh, peg in there, it acts just like a, 
a cylinder and piston in a car and it'll blow the side of this it can blow the side of this uh post out i've seen i've seen it happen so anyways i'm putting this in with this curve on the top lined up this way And, you know, uh, you can try to put them straight in line with each other, but that's a little bit hard to do, so you're better off putting them just a little bit off, because if they're both just a little bit off, it doesn't matter that they're both not just the exact same off. They're both off, and that's not as noticeable as you try to do them straight, and they're not straight. So I'm going to tilt that just a little bit. Okay. Got a little bit of glue came out there. And now I'm going to, before I put the wedge in, I'm going to saw this off. And the reason I saw this off first is just so that when I put the wedge in, it's going in right where this peg is going to be. I don't want a lot of excess peg sticking up, stopping, stopping the wedge from going in. Okay. I can't even barely see the curve right now. But it's there. And let's see, just make sure I'm going to put my knife blade down in there just so it, I know it's open. And I'm going to I'll put a little bit of, my glue bottle's not working too good right now. Ah, uh, where my nail go? I'm putting a little bit of glue right on the uh, on the top of the curve. And I'm putting a little bit of glue on the wedge. It's probably just squeeze off, but I did it anyway. Okay, here goes a wedge. I got it. Mm. Oh, I've got it over to this side here, and therefore I don't think it's. I'm going to have a little bit of a void on this side over here. I don't like that, but I can't get it back out. Maybe I can get it out with a pair of pliers. Nope. I'm just going to go for it. I might have to fill in a little hole on that side over there. Well, maybe it filled it in. Okay, it broke. Split down this way. That's not good, but it happened. Now I'm just going to saw that off. All right, got it sawed off. And now if I was regular doing this, I would be doing this one too, pretty much at the same time. I'd do each step two times but I'm just doing it once 
just for uh, time on the video. But then I'm going to take my tool, my spoon gouge, and I'm going to go all around this and just make this into a, I don't know what you call it, but it's just going to be a little touchstone, a little place where you can rub your fingers on it. So one of the things, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk. When I was shaping these arms, you know, I first started doing it with a draw knife and I routed out these, or I gouged out these uh, relief areas pretty much. But as you guys know that have done a spoon or a bowl, right where you go to the bottom of a grain, that very bottom place is a very difficult spot to clean up correctly. And I didn't have the patience to do all that. Besides these arms, the grain in these arms was uh, pretty scattered around. And so there was uh, some places that were hard or would be real hard to really clean up really, really nice with a draw knife and spoke shave. And so after I went all the way around the arms and did, you know, removal of large amounts, semi-large amounts, I don't know what you call it, with a draw knife, I switched over to sanding and I went all the way around the uh, arms with, a, with my big sander. See, I'm moving over this way. Hope I don't mess up the picture too bad. Um, and did the finish shaping with, you know, 80 grit sandpaper on a, on a belt sander, a stationary belt sander. And then once I got it's to the point where I like the shape pretty much, you know, everything about that. I switched over to my little drum sander, which you might be able to see in the background right over here. And I went over the arms, both arms with, you know, all the flavors of sandpaper, starting with uh, 120, then I went 150. I skipped 180 because I'm kind of low on that grit. And then I went to one, I mean, I went to 220. And I went completely over the whole arm. And after I did it, I rubbed my hands. You know, I went over the whole arm and felt to try to see if I could see any feel any little rough spots that needed to be, you know, cleaned up. Okay, I about got this done. But I'm not going to bore you with that anymore. But I just, that ends up being just a little bump that I, re that I don't really sand it off. It's, you know, has little facets on it from the knife. So anyways, that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's pretty much the final step of this process. One of the things that I did today was, I told you before that you want the tops of these uh, posts to be, you know, in plane with each other. And mine were really, really close, but they weren't perfect. And so today, I used my side sander, the thing we used on the, the rockers, the side sander, I used it across here like this to uh, get those more better in line. So that's something I did. Anyways, uh, I don't know what's next. You know, I need to 
do the, finish this, do this, riddle these ends here, and this chair is basically going to be done other than signing it, branding it, oiling it, putting the seat in, and all that's busy work that you know you saw in a previous videos on how to make a chair. And uh, I apologize that I goofed up the numbers on the episodes. I got, there's two 13s now. And I think I'll skip 14 and go to 15. And I think maybe I can go in and change that number to 14. So I'm sorry about that. But I don't, you know, when I go to do uh, that computer magic stuff, I just... Uh, mess it up sometimes don't know that i'm doing it anyways one of the things i kind of want to ask you people is i'm gonna i am gonna sell this chair and it's been so long since i've sold a chair like this or priced one i'm just curious and i'm not good at researching i don't like to research and i don't do it if any of you out there feel like researching a little bit or just your own opinion, how much do you think this chair should sell for? And I'm not looking for any kind of BS type answer like 25 gajillion dollars because I did it and I put it out here on video. You know, I want a realistic type answer you know, on the open market. Anyways, I just, uh, I'm just was thinking about that and just asking for a little feedback. Anyways, uh, this might be the last video on how to make a rocking chair. I'm not sure what else I would do other than maybe in a week or two. I don't know how long it will be before I have a seat in this. I might just come back with a little short video and saying this is this is the finished chair. Anyways, um, I really appreciate everybody that's watched and watching. Appreciate the comments. I don't know what the next project's going to be. But if nothing else, uh, maybe I'll make a video maybe about once a week and just stay in touch, show you maybe something that I've done that week, and just, like I say, stay in touch. But anyways, again, I appreciate you watching. I'm thankful for what I have, and I hope you can be thankful also for what you have. Anyways, uh, I'll, I'll just say so long for now, and uh Hope to hope you're doing well. Bye now.